Little bit of a different kind of video today, guys. We're actually gonna try to calibrate this gaming monitor. It's actually a 1080p, 144Hz uh, monitor with a TN panel. So you guys all know, you know, what's up with that in terms of uh, colors. So we're gonna try to calibrate it today with the Data Color Spider X Pro. Now to be honest with you, I've never actually used a monitor calibration tool, so I don't know exactly what to expect. You know, is this going to improve my overall uh, experience with the monitor? Am I going to have accurate colors that still don't look that great because of the type of panel that it is? Or is something else gonna happen? <laughs> I really have no idea to be honest. So we're definitely gonna hook this thing up, try it out, and uh, you know, see what the results are. Maybe it'll be beneficial for someone like you to use a monitor calibration tool on your own monitor. So I'm sure some of you guys are wondering like, okay, what the hell is gonna happen exactly? So basically we're gonna hook a tool up to the PC. It's going to sit uh, right here on top of the monitor and it's going to measure the colors of the monitor towards a uh, common standard to make sure that, you know, reds are red and greens are greens and blues are blues. It's also going to adjust the white balance of the monitor and find the proper white point. And uh, basically the whole uh, point of doing this is if, uh, say every display is matching against that same standard, then the colors are gonna be consistent. So if you are viewing something like a video, for example, on this display, and then you look at it on another display that's following the same standard, it's going to look identical. And that's kind of that idea behind uh, monitor calibration. So this is pretty important for people that are, you know, editing video, for example, say like you're doing color grading or color correction. You want it to look the same across all devices. You don't want it to look one way here, then one way here, then one way here. Same thing for photographers. Uh, you know, if you are editing a photo on your uh, PC and then you print it out, you don't want it to look different when it's printed than how it looks on your monitor. So you'll calibrate your monitor uh, to make sure that the colors are consistent. And I believe there may be some extra steps to actually calibrate the printer as well to get them both to match exactly. but. That's kind of the whole point behind uh, color calibration. Okay, so I got the monitor hooked up via uh, USB. So now we're just gonna go through the settings in the software and just kind of walk through the actual uh, calibration process. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is you wanna reset your uh, monitor back to its factory defaults. That way, if you've made any adjustments beforehand, it's not going to affect the results. So just uh, make sure you do that before you go through this uh, process if you've not already. So uh, in this first line here, you'll probably are just gonna get something that says generic PNP monitor uh, and then uncalibrated. If you've never done this before, I actually just renamed mine from uncalibrated to the monitor that we're actually gonna be using. So we'll just go ahead and use that one. We are using a, a desktop display. It's gonna ask for the manufacturer of your display. In this case, we are using a AOC. We are using a, a G2590FX uh, monitor so I've already uh, just typed that in uh, what type of uh, controls does your display offer so brightness or Kelvin presets we just have brightness in our monitor so we're going to select that and then the type of backlight that your monitor uses so mine is a uh, WLED so we're just going to go ahead and select that from the drop-down list here and uh, then from this point we're going to do a full calibration. So uh, you can see kind of the current uh, target settings here. So uh, we've got 120 brightness, 6500K white point, 2.2 gamma. Um, so if you are okay with those settings, then just uh, go ahead and select next. I believe it's actually going to recommend some settings based on uh, some stuff that's gonna happen going forward here, but uh, we'll just roll with that for now. So I want you to place the uh, Spider X on the desk. We've done that uh, right here. It's actually going to measure the ambient light in your room and then going to, uh, what's it say? Uh, and suggest to you the brightness target that best fits the room light conditions in your workplace. So it's going to choose, it's gonna recommend a certain uh, brightness level for your monitor 
based on the uh, ambient light that's in your room. So right now our uh, room light is very high. Uh, that's obviously because we are recording and uh, doing that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna turn it off for just a second just so that we can uh, get the true brightness that I'll be using when I actually uh, use this monitor. So we've got room light is medium right now. So this level is appropriate for typical photo editing. Calibrate the display to a brightness of 175 to 200 nits. And uh, I've got a recommended white point of 6,500. So we are going to uh, go ahead and accept the settings that it is suggesting here. All right, and now it wants us to place the Spider X on the screen. So we're just gonna hang this from the monitor. Hopefully we can uh, figure this out without too much hassle. All right, so we got the uh, Spider X Pro mounted on the monitor. Actually, let's go ahead and tilt it back just a little bit also, just to make sure it stays without any issue. Then we're gonna hit next. And it's gonna actually go through the monitor calibration process here. So you can see it's measuring the reds, the greens, the blues. Uh, we're finding the white point and uh, let's see here. So it actually wants us to adjust the brightness in order to find this uh, target of 180 nits. So uh, as you can see, the monitor is way, way brighter than uh, the target here. So we're gonna have to turn the brightness of the monitor uh, way down. So let me just go ahead and pull up the OSD of the monitor and it's at 90 brightness right now by default so let's try like 30 see what happens that's kind of weird it, I guess it's within this the threshold or whatever it's not exactly the best but we'll go ahead and roll with that I'm just gonna hit continue here And you can see it said refining the white point and uh, brightness. Now we're measuring reds. Okay, so it's complete. So we will uh, go ahead and take this down. Okay, that was weird. Got a uh, error on the creating the uh, color profile. Oh, there we go. So we went ahead and saved the color profile. And uh, from here, we can actually see the difference between uh, when it's calibrated and before when it was uncalibrated, just to kind of show us the difference between the colors. So if we go back and forth, I can see the monitor looked a little maybe green or yellowish before the calibration. So definitely it looks better now that it's been calibrated. The grays look a little bit uh, uh, better. Looks a little, yeah, there's definitely just that like yellowish, greenish type tone that's no longer there on the monitor. So I don't know if this will actually show up on the video well, but uh, definitely the the calibrated version looks a lot better. And then at the end here, now that we have the uh, monitor calibrated, it's gonna show us how much of the uh, coverage of a certain uh, color gamut we, uh, we have with this monitor. So we can see right now this monitor has 97% uh, of sRGB uh, coverage. That's basically for more like web-oriented colors. So. Um, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> Obviously this is a TN panel, so it's not really made for color accuracy. It's more for gaming, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're missing some color coverage there uh, in terms of sRGB. Uh, Adobe RGB, we're at 75%. So we can say here that based on this graph or whatever that they're showing that uh, obviously this isn't the best monitor for color reproduction, but doesn't mean it can't be enjoyable in a uh, gaming environment. Okay, I just gotta interrupt myself for one second and say since the last clip, I've actually reran the calibration process for both monitors. I actually recalibrated them to a brightness of 120 nits, which I read is actually optimal for photography work. Uh, I think if you're also printing stuff out though, you may have to play with that a little bit, but uh, around 120 is gonna be the target. So. 
Uh, I redid it. Uh, both monitors, I actually had to lower the brightness. The uh, gaming one is down to like 30 something brightness and the uh, one that actually was not able to get bright enough earlier is now down to like 50 brightness. So uh, one thing I learned is it's actually very important uh, as far as your ambient lighting, how the results are going to come out. So you want to make sure that you, you basically have optimal lighting before you actually run this calibration process. So you want to have a dim lit room. You don't want to have any type of glare or direct sunlight on the monitor or anything like that, because that can have a big impact on your uh, results and kind of the calibration process. So just keep that in mind. In terms of the color reproduction, I don't really notice the more accurate colors and I think that's maybe because all games are going to have like their own kind of color palette anyway so you aren't necessarily going to be seeing the uh, most realistic colors to begin with so honestly I don't I don't really notice uh, I do know that we kind of got rid of the green tint or hue that was there from the uh, factory with the monitor but to me it doesn't really seem to make a big difference in terms of my uh, overall experience so I would say maybe for something like this where uh, the color accuracy is not that crucial, you may want to just adjust to something that you personally enjoy rather than what's uh, more quote unquote accurate. Because we all know a monitor that has like super vibrant colors, it's super bright, may not be the most realistic thing, but it can still be pleasing to the eye. So I think something like that is kind of more important uh, in this specific scenario than just straight out uh, color accuracy. Now, if you're doing video editing or photo editing, that's gonna be a different story. All right, so now both monitors are calibrated and here's what I have to say about this thing after using it. Uh, first off is it was actually surprising how wildly off the uh, brightness and colors were on both monitors. I'm assuming a lot of displays are out there like that, especially some more budget oriented ones where, uh, you know, just everything was way too bright. Uh, the colors were definitely off in terms of color accuracy. Um, I will say that doesn't necessarily mean they aren't more uh, pleasing to the eye. Some people may like that. They may like a lot of brightness. They may like the way that the colors look out of the box. So if you're doing something that's non-color intensive, uh, gaming or just web browsing, then I would actually recommend just uh, adjusting the monitor to what's pleasing to your eye. I don't think this is uh, something like this is necessary for you. However, if you're doing actual uh, color sensitive work, uh, video editing, photography, anything like that, uh, then obviously uh, you're going to be doing it a little bit different. Uh, first thing is you'd want to invest in a good monitor right off the bat. This tool is not going to solve your problem by making uh, you know your monitor more accurate if it only covers 75% of a certain color gamut. So uh, that's not going to help you. So you want to get a good monitor first that's gonna be step number one now after you actually have a good monitor which we can see here uh, in terms of color accuracy neither one of these are, are that great to be honest uh, then you'd want to apply a tool like this to make sure that uh, you know the the colors are standardized that way they're consistent over multiple devices if you're printing something out you want to make sure it looks the same as what you're seeing on your monitor if you're video editing and you're color grading or color correcting, whatever, you want it to be consistent among devices for people that may, may be watching your videos and stuff like that. So in those scenarios, then yes, this is definitely something that you should pick up. I definitely think it is a useful tool. Uh, it can do things like adjust the brightness automatically of your monitor based on the uh, uh, ambient light in the room. That is if you, if you leave it connected after you calibrate it, um, you know, there's, there's stuff like that. If you get the elite version, you can, uh, match multiple monitors. Um, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with this, but there has to be a place for it. So obviously doing it on a gaming monitor was just for fun, just to see, you know, what exactly would happen, but, uh, you really can't fix uh, 75% Adobe RGB coverage on a uh, monitor. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. If you are going to uh, consider something like this, make sure you have a use for it. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions down in the comments below. If I said something wrong, please correct me down there. Like this video if you guys like this type of content. It's a little something different from uh, typical PC hardware. And uh, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out of here. See ya.